Uh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, I want to thank you for appearing before us today and also for your service to the nation. As I was preparing for this hearing, I researched hate crimes data for my state of Georgia, and I was troubled by the data that I found, or more precisely, what I didn't find. We clearly have a deeply flawed system for collecting hate crimes data, which has left us with unreliable and incomplete counts. The hesitation to report, investigate, and designate incidents as hate crimes demonstrates a deep-rooted failure of our justice system. One thing is clear. Since the start of the pandemic, we've seen a significant rise in anti-Asian and anti-Chinese rhetoric. And in March of this year, eight people were tragically murdered in a mass shooting in Atlanta, and six of those individuals murdered were women of Asian descent. At a press conference the next day, a police officer, a police official famously told those assembled that the shooter had, quote, had a bad day, end quote. And Director Ray, two days after the murders, you said in an interview with NPR, quote, while the motive remains still under investigation at the moment, it does not appear that the motive was racially motivated, end quote. Many people believe, Director Ray, that law enforcement reluctance to designate a homicide as a hate crime does a disservice to the victims and fails to prevent similar future crimes. Certainly, comments such as yours during an in ongoing investigation do not help the cause. Wasn't it inappropriate for you, sir, to infer to the press that you didn't believe that the murders of the six Asian women was a hate crime when, as you said, the motive was still under investigation? Well, certainly, as, as you know, Congressman, um, because that's my home city as well, uh, my heart aches for the victims of that attack, um, and I grieve with their families. Uh, in the instance in question, I think the comment I made was consistent with the information we had at the time, uh, but I, I regret if anyone's um, reaction to that uh, was otherwise. Well, I submit to you, sir, that such comments by the director of the FBI were not only harmful to the ongoing investigation, but also diminished already waning community confidence in law enforcement. I want to shift now to another uh, issue. Under current law, only those convicted of domestic terrorism-related felonies or hate crimes are prohibited from possessing firearms, but those convicted of misdemeanors that have a nexus to domestic terrorism or misdemeanor hate crimes may possess firearms without restriction. Would you agree that Congress should consider expanding the prohibition on the possession of firearms to those convicted of violent misdemeanors that are related to domestic terrorism and are violent hate crimes? Well, uh, I don't think it's, I'm in a position as FBI director to comment on specific legislative proposals, but I'm happy to uh, provide operational input to, to you if, uh, or have the FBI do so uh, with your staff. Certainly, I share the goal of making sure that those uh, who are prohibited by law from possessing firearms don't get their hands on the firearms, and certainly to the extent that there are things that can be done to uh, protect the public. We want to do that. That's why our NICS uh, uh, section up in West Virginia processed, and last year processed, I think, a record almost 40 million background checks uh, of firearms right through the, the middle of the pandemic. Um, so we are trying to do our part to make sure that the laws on the books related to firearms are enforced uh, and that those who are not supposed to have firearms don't get them. Uh, individual well, okay, states. Okay, let me let, let me them. stop you there. I got one more issue I want to talk about. Uh, when you were here last year, you mentioned the creation of the domestic terrorism hate crimes fusion cell. Uh, can you provide us with some insight into how the fusion cell operates? And to be clear, is it just one cell, or are there multiple cells? I appreciate very much the question. So this is something that I stood up about a year and a half or so ago. 
um, bringing together the domestic terrorism expertise that we have together with the hate crimes expertise which we have, which is more in the civil rights program. Uh, and together, the goal was to try to be more proactive and to try to do a better job of anticipating and preventing hate crimes. And so, for example, we're very proud of the success that that cell helped create uh, in Colorado, where we were able to prevent a, uh, an attack, a, terror, uh, a hate crime uh, against a synagogue, uh, forgotten the city in Colorado. But that was a big part of what came out of that fusion cell. The fusion cell is one cell in headquarters, but it, uh, it works with all of our field offices uh, and helps coordinate that effort. And again, the whole goal is to try to be ahead of the threat. That's the point of it. Gentlemen's time has expired. Uh... Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like unlike I've ever seen in a case, uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. He made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. 
When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.